to say, let's take a look at a different uh, type of automation here using a get state function. Now, get state functions could basically be used the same way across different areas of the software uh, within NitroCell. We're going to use it in this way where I want to get the state of a model, and then we're going to drop the state of that model into a different location within Excel so that we can use that to drive some knowledge. So what do I mean by get state? Well, in this particular case, we want to get the state of a model uh, out of the current assembly that I have here. So if I put in a specific name here uh, as a subassembly or something like that, I could very specifically target something to look at and then a model within it to find out its, its state. But in this particular case, we're just going to accept the default that's already there and we're going to find out what the state of this gasket is. So I'm going to type in gaskets.prt and then I want to drop that information into a different location within my Excel workbook. So I've already set up another tab here that's an execution worksheet that I want to drop the data into this cell. Now, when this data gets to the cell, I want to be able to kind of evaluate that and determine whether or not I want to turn on other functionality. So this exclude column, we're going to actually come in and type in an if statement. And I happen to know that if I um, pick that cell and say, if the state of that is active, I want to go ahead and put nothing there. Otherwise, I want to exclude this function from running. So if I type in the word active, you can see it says, okay, there's a gasket active in the model. I want to delete that from the design. If there is nothing active in the model, I want to bypass that function. Now the regenerate here will do the same thing, except we're just going to reference that previous piece of logic. So now if I type in active, you can see that they both shut off. And if there's nothing there, they both uh, disable. So if I come back here, the only thing really missing here is to tell it where to send the data. So I'm going to type in uh, process model, which is the name of the worksheet. And then we're going to drop that in cell E7. So I'm going to drop that in E7. You can also use the name range if you want to. Um, to get the other sheet to run after this, we're going to do worksheet as our object type. And then we're going to say execute tab. And then we're just going to use that same uh, worksheet name that we typed in previously. Now, when I run this, it's going to get the state of the model that's currently active uh, in session for a model called gasket.prt within this assembly. It's going to drop the data into E7 on this other worksheet, and then it's going to go run that worksheet, which will flip tabs here. Whatever is dropped into this cell will either enable or disable the functionality, and then it will either apply or run and continue. So when we press the do it button, it's going to go and run that. And as you can see, it removed the gasket from our display uh, according to that because the value of the gasket was active. And then it ran, removed the gasket, and then regenerated. If we run it again, you'll notice that there is nothing there. It's deleted, so it bypassed that functionality because the logic kicked in. This is really handy if you want to set up like very simple things to go batch process. Uh, the status of models it can be used for parameters, it can be used for notes, it can be used for layer settings, uh, model existence, all kinds of functionality. But this little framework that I've just showed you here is extremely handy for doing that type of stuff.